Hey y'all, Jason here with Dirt Race Life. So as you can see, we're still working on our metric build for our street stock. I wanna catch y'all up to speed on where we're at. As you can see, door bars are in. Uh, and just looking at the design right here. So the last time in the episode, you know I had this top bar right here in, and then just the frame and all of this was missing. Well, we got all the driver's compartment done that we need to get done, so I went ahead and dropped these in. And you can see I came out eight inches on this center tube, came out six on this upper one, and about five on this lower one right here. And I did it a little bit different. I just, like, what made sense to me, I ended up on this center one turning and coming down into the point. And then on this upper bar, I was looking at it like I wanted some protection as far as, like, where my pedals and stuff were because I really didn't want to get in some light wreck that the car was okay and they didn't wipe out the left front but they got into me right here and like I get put out of the race just because that they had gotten into my pedals and messed all of that up and then possibly could have got into one of my feet by doing that. So I took this upper tube right here and I came in as well. I had to put another turn into it and this one right here was not fun to bend. Um, to figure out, but I had to put another turn into it here as well because you see our tube for our engine mount plate turns in right there, which really looks slick, but it works really well too. Um, so that these two are lined up in a plane and I got all of that. They're not perfectly parallel. I got them as close as I could. Got that one in, got this one in. The bottom one, I just turned in short right here. I'm fixing to grab the camera. Don't worry, we'll walk by it. And then I just took and put in this tube right at where my halo is. So it's protecting as far as this is where my head's at. So I got this tube in right here and then I just extended it all the way down through into the frame. And then I turned around and you can see I've got the legs in and then I also came on the outside all the way around. I split the difference. I got like 16 inch um, openings right here and went right down through the middle all the way down into the frame as well. So I've got four bars here plus the frame down here. I'm happy with it. Really looks good. Before it's over, I'm gonna have the chassis on the ground. I'm gonna put a tube in right here. I think I'm gonna be able to put this leg in and be able to put a seat in and take it out without even having to take the halo off. But if I need to take the halo off to work it, it's fine. I could come way back and still put a seat in. Super happy with this. Here, let me show y'all. See if we can get up closer. Not a lot of room over here, but I do want to show you how this worked out. So you can see how we did this one right here and we matched them up. They're on a plane together. I like that. And then turn around and just came out and down and around um, all the way here. And of course I put this one on the same angle back as that one. And then I just took that line of that angle for the rear hoop and just followed it all the way down through there, you know, and around. Now that I got y'all caught up on what's been going on, what's next? Well, I want a plate from here back. So this center tube that I went down through here, that kind of represents like, like from my knee in the seat back. Uh, and that's where I want that extra safety protection for me. And I've got some donor plate uh, steel that I got off a piece of scrap. And it's about a hundred thousandths thick. So it's a little less than an eighth inch, a little more than three six, three six or three thirty seconds. I think maybe somewhere around 15 gauge is what that is, 14 or 15 gauge. But anyway, it's plenty thick from what I want to do. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna go weld it on from the top all the way around to the frame. And then I'll, this part, I'll cut individual pieces and like stitch them in, cause that's tricky. There's lots of angles and stuff going on right here. This one's easy, cause I can just take and weld to the frame and like roll it over and trim it and weld it. And that's nothing there. Um, and I've already ground down. This is where my welds were kind of sticking out. I just kind of flattened them off. That way I can just fold it over. I know I'm gonna roll this one down and weld it in because that's a safety thing. So I know I'm gonna be to the cage up here and then I'll have a lip. Like when I climb in the car, I'll have a piece of steel and then I'll have a pan here. Probably have to beef that up. Use some thicker aluminum under it or some bracing because uh, you know me, I'm sit on it, I'm big. Um, but anyway, something up here, but regardless, I can go ahead and get this in right here, get all of this prepped and ready to go. Let's get that knocked out. Y'all see my donor still here. I got two pieces of this stuff right here. 
And I tell you what, steel is high, y'all. And man, if I can find it somewhere and make it work, that's a big chunk of cost in the car is being able to come up with the materials. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna start at the top. I'm gonna stitch it in at the top and I'm gonna wrap it. And I'm leaving, I know I got a little bit of extra here. I'm gonna try to wrap it all the way under and then beat that in and then just trim it to fit. And I'm just eyeballing it to get this thing level with that top tube where it'll go straight down. Oh, and that looks pretty dadgum good. Now it's standing off that face of that tube just a little bit, but that's okay. I can, I can feel that in me a little stick here. You hold it. And I'm going to put one here. Have I got you? Ooh. Are you? Are you there? I think my tip's starting to get dirty, y'all. It just stuck on me. I haven't changed it in a while. Let's start stitching it up. Y'all, oh, yeah. I gotta put another tip on y'all. Sorry, we'll be right back. Sorry about that, we had to do a little maintenance there. They don't last forever, y'all. Rub a little goober juice there on it. Yeah, looks good to me. All right, let's try this again. Oh, that's better. That's better. Okay, let's see if we can get this thing in here. Yeah, that should be good. I wonder if I'm messing my lens up on my camera. I don't know. Did y'all see any sparks hitting the camera? Really don't need to do that. The GoPro's kind of high. Okay, so we got that, right? It's on this one. All right, so here's my plan. Let's see how this works. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if this is gonna work or not. I think it's gonna work. So I might have to get a rubber mallet and kind of like force the crease into it. Yeah, I think so, because that is some thick stuff. I'm gonna get a rubber mallet and I'm gonna force that crease to start to take right there. I don't think I'm gonna have to heat this. But it is some thick stuff. It is, it is some thick stuff. I don't have a brake, so. Ah, there it goes, you see it? All right, I'll be the first to admit it. There are definitely easier ways to go about doing this. You see me, I'm using a piece of steel. Maybe it's a little bit thicker than I have to use. I could go just a little bit lighter on this. Maybe it would bend a little bit easier if I was doing it by hand. Obviously, if you had a metal brake, that's gonna make that a lot easier. I've got a really small shop. Um, you know, y'all see all me shooting all my videos and everything. 28 by 36 is all this shop is. Everything happens right here in the shop. I'm packed wall to wall with tools and items and everything. And, you know, I just can't go, I mean, even if I could afford to go buy the tools, which I can't, I don't have anywhere to put them, y'all. That's just what it is. It's like, we're getting by, we're gonna make this work and everything. But if you've got a buddy with a break, don't fight with this like I am right now, okay? All right, back to work. All right, y'all, this is gonna be a trick right here. I'm glad I have not been skipping leg day. Don't be making fun of me now, cause I'm gonna make this thing fit. Ah, 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 ah. Lord help me. Oh, God. Get up there, flick. I got her now. 
It's dark over here on this side of the car because my jig is all the way over here up against the wall of my shop. I just don't have the room, y'all. I'm sorry about it. But I did want to kind of show y'all how I do this. So I just use cardboard. And what it is is I've got this piece of plate still wrapped around. But the back of the seat right in here, I want to place this. And I've got some, some scrap pieces of good thick steel here that I'm wanting to use. And what I do is, is I just take, and so this is a weird corner right here. That hole right there, that's where my bolt is for my lower trailing arm, and it's right at the back of the seat. But I gotta make sure I can't plate over that. And I just sit here and I just, you know, I make a couple stabs at it and I start cutting. And because what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to figure out, like, that's a roll-in. So I'm going to kind of try to figure out what that curve is. And I'm going to take, and I've got some markers somewhere. So I'm going to kind of figure out what that, what that is there. I'm just about a little more. I'm just about there. This stuff's not rocket science, but you gotta be a little bit patient with it. Okay, so like there it is, right there, okay? So like now I'm in there and I'll turn around and I'll say, okay, I want this side to come right up through here and I want this side to go right up through there. That might be just a little bit. You see how rough I did that. So I'm just kind of getting a rough idea and then I'm gonna trim back. There's a lot of stuff you can do like this, you know, it's like a, a weird piece of aluminum you're trying to figure out, like how to get it shaped to, to fit in somewhere. So now, that's in there. This side looks good. I got me about a half inch overlap. That looks good. I'm running up that bar. And then I'm going to turn around and I'm going to just go to the bottom of that tube all the way around. I may have cut it a little short right there. And just do that remember. So now I got it. Go up through here. Yep. So I'll remember when I make my pattern, I'll just go out a little bit. And I'm gonna come back just a hair. I just want to go to the bottom of that tube. I don't have to wrap over that tube. This is thick steel. I don't want to wrap over that tube. many wells I can't start bending it but I want enough so that it don't break off where it like forces the steel to pin so kind of find that happy medium there okay that's enough Clamping it up, welding it. We have the big boys here. Yep. There we go. Gotcha. There's that. Yep, I'm gonna get you. Get you over here on this corner. Now maybe, but I got it held there. I can get. Seriously nasty with it. Oh yeah. That's what I figured, y'all. Well, I got all that plating done back here around the seat. And I gotta put a few scabs in on this front, give me something to like pop the metal to. And so I'm just gonna throw in some little pieces here. 
give it a little twist. Make it a little easier for me when I'm putting that aluminum there to have something to tie it on to. Let's go ahead and get the radiator mounts done. Let's get that in this episode, because I'm thinking the only other thing left before the car comes off the jig is just the front end itself. I want to do that on its own episode. So, radiator. Uh, I got to put this idler arm on so we see how much room we've got right here. And this is a stock one. Um, I might change this out or whatever, but you know, throwing this on just so that it can kind of like take up the room so that we don't like interfere with the radiator or the hose so we'll know where it's at. But I'm not saying I'm gonna stay with that. We're gonna have to figure out what's going on with the bump and all of that to see what we need to change between that. We're gonna try to do that in the next episode. But anyway, just gonna throw it up there. All right, we got our 24 inch radiator right here, which on the E85 is plenty. Don't actually even need a fan shroud or anything. My biggest challenge I had all year last year was just getting the engine to get warm enough, not run cool. Uh, it looks like on this metric frame that that is gonna be too tight to be able to run in beside the steering sector because I was actually able to run in beside that steering sector. Now, if I went high, if I went high, I could do it, but I'm gonna be too high in the nose. And so I am gonna have to be in front of that steering sector, which that's okay. But I was just wondering like how high. And what I'm thinking is, I'm just looking at the sight line of the car and where the engine and everything is at. And it looks like I need to be right in here. Kind of like take that top of that fan right there and it really becomes a challenge when the fan's way up above the radiator. But that right there would work fine. And that's pretty well. See, I just, I, I'm just eyeballing it, you know. Yeah. Pretty well height-wise, just the bottom of the chassis frame across flat is where the radiator's gonna sit. And I'm going to have to be in front of the steering sector. Otherwise, I'm going to end up with my, um, my intake right here. It's going to be up into my idler arm. And that's going to be no good. So, I'm going to have to be in front of it. I'm going to lean it slightly back. And probably put me at least a quarter inch clearance in front of that arm. So, let's start building something and put on there. I ended up with a piece of inch and a half, inch and a half um, angle. This is pretty lightweight. This is, I don't know, like 330 seconds or something. But anyway, I am going to drop it down below. I've got my marks here. And I'm going to weld it on. This is what I'm going to use for my base. Make sure I've got the angle where it clears my steering sector. That. that looks good. Just a little bit up. Spot one side and then I'll do the other side. All right, so I made me a mark where I want the edge of the radiator over. I got me another piece of this inch and a half angle right here, but I can't just put them together. That's tighter than what the radiator is. So I've got me a couple of small blocks right here. I'm gonna lay a block in here and that's gonna be my bridge. Let me throw this on here right quick. You'll see how this works. So we're going to sit that right up there. And I'm going to do something and I'm going to tell y'all, be super careful when you're welding around an aluminum radiator with a MIG welder. Man, if you bump it with that wire, you're going to put a hole in it. So I said that, I probably just pinched myself. But... I'm not gonna put, I'm gonna put a little bit of extra, ooh, that was hot where I welded it, crap. Anyway, I'm gonna put a little bit of extra room in this to account for, I think I'm gonna use an inner tube, is what I'm thinking. If I can find a piece upstairs. So I'm gonna put a little bit of extra room. Just like that. And 
and if for some reason it pulls the ground through the radiator, that's going to blow a hole in it. So, yeah, it's some sketchy stuff I'm doing right now. Yep, it ain't going to move. I can pull it out for that one. I just want to make sure I've got it right, and I ain't feel like taking three days trying to measure it. Hold it, get it right. Yep, got a little bit of room. Yep. I'm going to shove an inner tube down in there and throw that radiator in on, on it. Now that I've done that, all right, people think I'm crazy, but don't. So I use a 24 inch piece where I can get the ends and get the angle the same. Now that I got it welded on the ends, I don't need all that. I'm going to come in three inches on this side and three inches on this side. So I've marked that three inches on both sides. I don't need this piece. We don't need that. The other thing is, all these sharp corners have got to go. You shoot your radiator down in here, punch a hole right in the tank, so I gotta go. All right, I got some little end blocks here I'm gonna put on. Keep the radiator bottom from sliding around. It's not gonna wanna move because the top's gonna have it compressed too, but I'm gonna put these on here. There we go. Got this joker. Line it up, and we're gonna keep this thing old school simple. I used to do them like this years ago, and I'm just gonna do this on this one. It works fine. I got a piece of half inch square tubing right here. First thing I'm gonna do is cut it to length. So I'm gonna cut it that long right there. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lay it right in behind there. Now this is not actually where it's gonna end up. But that's how I'm gonna mark it right quick. So I'm gonna put it in the center. Got me some holes. Make me a mark right in the middle of each one of them holes. Come here, where I can mark you. Yep, yep. I'm gonna drill a quarter inch hole in every one of them. All right. Y'all just bear with me a second. This is going to make sense. This is a down and dirty, quick and easy way to make a radiator mount. All right, so I got my radiator here sitting in the middle. I got me a bar. I got me a couple bolts. Let me go grab a ratchet right quick and I'll thread them down. One thing I've learned is don't become too attached to radiators because they like to become unattached from cars and wrecks. They will let you down. So don't go spending a ton of time making the most beautiful, perfect mount. Make a good functional mount. Because I promise you they will let you down. Okay, so I got that in there, right? And I'm gonna take, let me get this out of the way. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna do one side first. I'm going to mark right where the that edge of that radiator is, right there. Piece of steel here, right here, find that mark. I don't want to be on my tank, I want to be over my ribs, but I don't want to be, I want to be right on the edge of my ribs. So let me get that exactly where I marked it. Okay, so we got that one. There it is. So I'm gonna take, I'm fixing to mark it where I cut it off because I need to use the other end of that. So now I'm gonna set that up there. Now it's gonna all start making sense. Yeah. All right, so the top, is right there. Gotcha. I'll roll just a little bit. Mark that one, cut it. Quick, 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 quick. We're not quite, I need to. Come here, this way. 
Now you notice it's kind of rickety. We're gonna put some more supports on it. Don't worry. But uh, oh, that needs to go over that way. And I might have got you down to degrees, but we gotta make you fit. So bend as necessary. <laughs> bend as necessary. Okay. So again, don't weld your radiator. That one right there. And then this one, right here. All right, I got it. Now, I can get this radiator out of the way before I mess it up. I got some quarter inch solid rod here. Just gonna make me a, just a little simple strut brace. It will not take much at all to hold this. We just don't want that wiggling, you know, back and forth, back and forth. The top radiator can uh, the top radiator hose actually, it really helps to like absorb a lot of that, you know, with the top of the radiator wanting to shake. But we need to put a little something. I'm not putting a whole lot of work into this, and I'm just going to go into my my cage too right there. And I'm not going to put a whole lot of work into this because, you know, this is stuff that you can tear up. So. And I might have to like cut this loose for some reason because like, I mean the motor will come out. Like there's no problem for me to pull, pull the motor over the top of this and everything. But, you know, if for some reason I was doing something weird and like, okay, it's in the way. Well, I just cut it loose. I'm not going to bolt all this in. It's just not worth it, y'all. Okay, here we go. All right. Now, on this other side, I do need to check because I got a top hose. I'm gonna make sure whatever I do over here, I don't get in the way of that top hose. So let me see where that top hose is. See? See where that top hose is at? I'm telling you, so that works. All right? Like that. Okay. EQ out of there. So those little quarter inch rods, they will be fine for the struts. Cause all I'm trying to do is just keep that from like wiggling and stuff. That's all I need. I don't, you know, there's no point in overkill on that. Radiator just sits in there. I'm thinking inner tubes down here, but I might do silicone and uh, like some saran wrap. And that'll make sense when I do it. Any of y'all that have done that before, you'll know what I'm talking about. But regardless, however we do it, we'll show that when we're doing the assembly. But yeah, so throw it in there, bolt it up. And because I put that mount on the inside like that, if you think about it, so it's on this side of the radiator, um, I may not bother with a fan shroud at this point on this car because like I said, this thing, you know, like I was running features dead hot summer and I was hitting 170. I may not even bother y'all. Uh, but regardless, when I do build a fan shroud at some point, I got a gas engine in it, whatever. I got a base here to just pop rivet right onto and go with. Like it's all the way around, I'm good to go. So you can see that's super simple, super easy. Total time of me doing this, one hour. From the time I started this to the time I ended, seriously, one hour, and that's good to go. Don't put a bunch of time and effort into radiator mounts. You're just gonna tear it up, okay? Like, that's just the reality of stock car racing. Um, man, we've been all over the place on this episode. We started out on door bars and we're over here. You can tell we're just getting those last little things done. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these front horns off and just put a plate right here while I got it up and the next episode on this, now we got some stuff we'll show with Rachel, but as far as the car goes, I'm gonna get this whole front end bolted up uh, and all of that done and do the bump, run the bump. I think it's gonna be easier for us to like do bump steer with the car up on the jig where maybe we can like take measurements 
and we can have the camera up underneath there and we can like show the angles of the stuff moving and we'll just figure it out together. See if our center link and the other arms and the ones that we've got will work or if we've got to modify stuff. The best way you can make sure that you don't miss that is to be subscribed to the channel, have those notifications turned on, follow me on social media and everywhere. I put my notifications all over everything. Every time one of these episodes comes out, I will see you next time.